it's a, it's a pleasure to be here today and, and present to such an auspicious group. Uh, Cytrix is a very exciting biopharmaceutical company. The symbol is CYTR. And uh, as far as our milestones and royalties, we have a drug aromoclamol, which is likely to get approved next Thursday. It'll be the first drug for a horrible often disease called Neiman Pick type C. It's a neurodegenerative disease. It affects children at birth. They either die, live to be teenagers, or die by the time they're 20. They lose their speech. They lose their, lose their motor ability, their coordination, their memory. It's a horrible disease, an odd drug, which is an oral pill, which you take three times a day, could offset the horrible effects of Neiman Pick type C. What makes it unique is that the FDA has granted it breakthrough status, which means it's a rare drug. Not only that, but the FDA and EMEA in Europe have permitted the drug to be used before approval and over 90 uh, patients are now taking that drug under compassionate use. So we look forward to next Thursday and to getting that drug approved. Our other drug, which we've out licensed to Immunity Bio is aldoxorubicin. Uh, and finally, we have a multi-billion dollar private, wholly owned subsidiary, Centurion Biopharma. And that company is unique, and I will be telling you about it during the course of this presentation. So on Offizyme, we stand to have 100 million in milestones, Immunity Bio 343 million, or a total of 443 million coming in to Citrix, plus Royal Stones, single and double digit. So right now our market cap's around 72 million. So if you do the math and you add in a $250 million net operating loss, clearly we have the potential to be a multi-billion dollar company. And accordingly, the stock would not be $2. Uh, we also have the subsidiary, which on its own can be a multi-billion dollar company. A little more about Offerzyme. Uh, the market potential is 500 million for aromoclamol and patients will be charged and insurance will cover between three and 600,000 a year. There's over 3,000 patients in the US and Europe. There's more, a little bit about Neiman Pick. 95% have mutations in the Neiman Pick gene, and the most you could live is 20 years, but it's a horrible, horrible lifestyle. It's, uh, you're really pretty much in a wheelchair. So this is the commercial plan. When the drug is approved next week, uh, we'll launch the drug with our partner, Offerzyme. It will be launched in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, if Europe approves the drug, it'll be launched in Europe. What's great about the launch is we get $6 million when the first launch happens. 4 million on the second launch, 2 million in Japan when that's launched, and we get milestone, we get royalties, single and double digit. So this year we will actually be profitable and we won't have any taxes to pay because we have that $250 million net operating loss. A little about immunity bio. There you could see 343 million. Immunity Bio happens to be controlled by the wealthiest Chinese 
American, Dr. Patrick Soon Xiang, who's worth 20, million, 20 billion US dollars, all self-made. He's our partner and a good friend of mine. And he's working on our drug <clears throat> with pancreatic cancer, in pancreatic cancer. He's already cured the Senate majority leader, Harry Reid, who had stage four pancreatic cancer, which is a death sentence, but he's in remission, which is great news. In addition, we're planning a trial in brain cancer, as well as soft tissue sarcoma. Soft tissue sarcoma is a cancer of the connective tissues and blood vessels. There's 50 different types and it's a deadly cancer. So we're very excited about working with the wealthiest doctor in the world, self-made Dr. Patrick Soon Xiang. This is a little slide on our pipeline. You can see soft tissue sarcoma up there. We have a combination trial in sarcoma with a drug called ifosfamide, which is just a generic. That trial appears to be the best in the world for soft tissue sarcoma, and Dr. Pat is pursuing that. Pancreatic cancer, we're in a registrational trial, and that could be approved in the next year or two. And finally, glioblastoma or brain cancer, which we're getting set to produce the clinical trial. Very exciting times. So here you see Pat's presentation at the JP Morgan conference. He spoke on how great the pancreatic cancer trial was doing. 83% of the patients were still alive uh, after the uh, date indicated, which is extraordinary. They doubled the historical rate of saving patients. And I wouldn't be surprised if the drug gets approved for pancreatic cancer, and it would be a blockbuster because it's the only drug that potentially could keep you alive when everything else fails. And this is a deadly cancer. A little about our subsidiary, Centurion Biopharma. We set that up 10 years ago in Freiburg, Germany. They developed aldoxorubicin, which Patrick is using. So we know the drug works and works very well. It's been in over a thousand patients. And now we have a new generation of drugs that our lab uh, worked on. We developed ladder seven, eight, nine, and 10. They're all cancer drugs. They're ultra high potency cytotoxics, which means they really work powerfully and have the potential to be better than a product on the market called antibody drug conjugates. We've invested over $20 million in that technology. And not only do we have the four drug candidates, but we have a test, a diagnostic, which tells the oncologist which patients to treat, which means our responses will be much higher and much likely to break the bank. And these are the four drugs. Ladder seven with an orostatin, ladder eight, an orostatin. Those are the cytotoxic agents that go into the tumor. My tansinoids and another one is my tansinoids. And then the diagnostic, the ACDX. So rather than cut through this slide, I'll get to the point. You go into a doctor's office. He gives you a 30 minute IV. It's not a pill like aramacamol. You're out of there in 30 minutes. That compound that we develop goes right to the tumor through the bloodstream and kills the tumor on the spot. So it's like a rocket that just hits a particular building 
rather than hurt anybody else. So it doesn't have any effects on the other tissues. It doesn't have any effects on cardiovascular. It just kills the tumor, which is great. It's targeted therapy. That's our pipeline on Centurion. Uh, we're in the process of manufacturing the drug at Lanza in Switzerland. The most important thing on that slide is the fact that we have patents that go out to 2035 and 2038. This gives you a good picture of the various tumors that our drugs attack, breast cancer, head and neck cancer, melanoma, which is skin cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, a deadly cancer. Breast is the biggest in the world, I believe. Non-small cell is right there also. Ovarian cancer, renal cancer, and other potential solid tumor models. So this drug is a potential blockbuster. The catalyst coming up, we talked about briefly next week, next Thursday, Orphazyme expects approval for Aramoclamol for Neiman Pick, and then Europe in the second half of the year. We get our milestone payments and then royalties. So we'll be profitable this year. Our cash position remains strong. We have 9.3 million in cash, no debt. We're debt adverse. We have only 36 million shares outstanding. We have 3 million options, fully diluted, 39 million. So we're in great shape, as you will see on the next slide. So we only spend about 430,000 a month. We run a very tight ship to keep the cost down. So with the Orphazyme milestones and royalties, and with the Immunity Bio milestones and royalties, and with our NOL, and not counting our multi-billion dollar company, which we own, Centurion, Cytrex can certainly become a multi-billion dollar company. And analysts believe that our stock could go up from what it is now, roughly $2 a share, to 50 to 100 times what it is now. So that's pretty exciting in the opinion of analysts who follow the company. So I want to thank you for this presentation. And now I will be pleased <clears throat> to answer questions that you may have. Thank you, Stephen, for uh, sharing the story. Let's uh, look at uh, some of the questions. We have a couple of questions here from one from Daryl. Is uh, what's the timeline of the immunity bio potential milestone of the 343 million, like step-by-step step sort of what, what's the timeline? Good, que good question. Uh, so immunity bio is working on a registrational trial in pancreatic cancer. It's very conceivable that in 2022 or 2023, that drug will be on the market and we'll get milestones and royalties from that drug. Great. And then another one here from Christy is asking what are these, uh, with this potential milestone and royalties, uh, does that mean that you don't need to raise any capital in the future at all? Well, we don't need to raise any capital because we're gonna be profitable this year. We would only raise capital for our subsidiary Centurion if that's necessary, because we want to build Centurion into a multi-billion dollar company. But as far as Citrex is concerned, right now we have no intention of raising any additional capital. 
Okay, this one from Sarah here. Uh, he's probably taught, wanting you to talk a bit more about the background. So he said, how did Citrus decide to formulate drugs for those in the, to, in the, in the beginning and have to meet the un, high unmet needs? And, and what populations are you planning to expand to? Well, we obviously uh, are in the neurodegenerative uh, area and now we're concentrating on Neiman pick type C and Gaucher's disease, which is getting ready for another clinical trial and Parkinson's. Uh, as far as immunity bio, we're gonna continue on with pancreatic, with brain cancer, with soft tissue sarcoma. There might be other cancers that we tackle too with PAT, but on uh, the other company, Centurion Biopharma, we can attack every conceivable solid tumor from brain to pancreatic to renal. It'll be a pure cancer play. And we expect that within three to five years, Centurion alone would be acquired by a major pharma for at least three to $5 billion. So we'll take one more question here from this Chinese channel here uh, from Ryan too. So how much, uh, let me translate, how much capital has been invested uh, approximately in Citrix? Uh, there's been, in Citrix, there's been approximately 300 plus million in capital on Aramoclamol to develop that. We spent close to 100 million on aldoxorubicin to develop that before we licensed it out, another 100 million. And on uh, Centurion, we've already spent 25 million. And uh, so I would say altogether with overhead, at least $300 million. Great, I think that's about it for all the questions here. Thank you for answering all those uh, and sharing your exciting story to start off the day for us. Thank you so much, Gilbert. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking uh, at this conference. Uh, the GCFF is a great conference. Uh, I love working with your people and I wish you all in the audience well and stay safe and stay happy, most importantly. And yeah. Keep in mind, CYTR. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. So beware all the audience that Stephen mentioned that there are some milestone potential catalysts in the news in the near future of uh, CYTR. Mm -hmm.